another interesting literature class. My name is Precious Balogun. Our theme for today is General Introduction to Prose, and our topic is Symbolism. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to define symbolism, examine some examples of symbolism, and finally, discuss the relationship between language, style, and symbolism. Words make more meaning when they are visualized. So writers use words, use images and objects to create a deeper meaning in the mind of readers. For example, he turned green when he found a wallet. Green in this context can mean jealousy or greed. So the writer uses the word green to create a mental picture in the minds of his readers. In literature, different kinds of expressions are used by writers to make their work clear and more understandable by the readers. Now, these expressions evoke or compel the reader's imagination. And one of such expressions is symbolism. Now, what is symbolism? Symbolism is the use of words, images, or objects to represent a thought or an idea other than its real meaning. Symbolism equally evokes the attention of the reader. It gives the reader an insight to what the writer means. Symbols help the readers associate and connect things with ideas or concepts. And this helps the reader understand the perspective of the writer. A writer can use different objects or images to mean different things. For example, a writer can use a dough to symbolize peace or gentleness. A writer can also use rainbow to symbolize hope. A writer can also use a red rose to symbolize love or romance. Also, a writer can use butterfly to symbolize transformation. Finally, a writer can use the color yellow to symbolize decline, infidelity, gloom, and also freshness and happiness. From the last example, we see that the writer uses the color yellow to mean different things, just to pass on his ideas and thoughts to the readers. Now let's look at some other examples of symbolism. Example one, she dwelt among the untrodden ways besides the spring of dove, a maid whom there were none to praise and very few to love, a violent by a moosey stone, half hidden from the eye, fair as a star when only one is shining in the sky. Untrodden ways by William Wordsworth. William Wordsworth, in his poem Untrodden Ways, uses symbolism to express meaning. Now let's see the words he used. He uses springs of dove, a violence by a moosey stone, and a star shining in the sky. All this symbolizes quiet. He uses it to describe the woman he loves. Now let's take a look at another example. Example two. Ah, well a day, what evil looks had I from old and young? Instead of the cross, the apatros about my neck was hung. Rhyme of the ancient marina by Samuel Taylor. In this poem, the rhyme of the ancient marina by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, he talks about a bed, a bed called the abatros. He uses the abatros to symbolize a terrible sin he had committed and also guilt. Now let's take a look at another example. Example three. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time play many parts, As You Like It by William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare, in his poem, uses the word stage to symbolize the world, and also he uses the word players to symbolize men and women. Now let's look at the relationship between language style and symbolism. Language is symbolic in nature. It is a system of communication used by writers to convey meaning. So a writer can have different styles of using language. Now let's take a look at an example. 
For example, an author can use the word bread to mean something different from its literal meaning, which is edible. The writer can decide to use bread to refer to money or something else. Therefore, language is symbolic to the words we speak or write, and it also differs from one author to another, which is the style of the author. Now we've come to the end of today's lesson, but before we go, Let's take a look at what we have learned so far. We learned that words make more meaning when it is visualized. We also learned that symbolism invokes the interest of the readers. We learned that symbolism gives an insight into the mind of the writer. Also, we learned that symbols help readers associate and connect things with ideas or concepts. Finally, we learned that every writer has their way with language and this makes their work unique to them. Before we go, let's test ourselves on what we've learned so far. Question one, symbolism does all except one. A, creates a mental picture in your mind. B, gives deeper meaning to a narrative. C, tell a story to the audience. D, describes the mind of the writer. And the correct answer is C. Symbolism does not tell a story to the audience. Question two, dash is the use of images or words to represent an idea or thought. A, plot, B, style, C, symbolism, D, language. And the correct answer is C, symbolism. Symbolism is the use of images or words to represent an idea or thought. Now we have come to the end of today's class. I believe by now you know what symbolism is and the relationship between language, style, and symbolism. See you in our next class. Bye-bye.